Hey, I am Jason Graves, and it has been 15 years since I accidentally clicked on Breath of Fire running on a ZSNES emulator on a hand-me-down e-machine that once belonged to my second former stepdad. I fell in love with the genre instantly. I fell out of love on April 5th, in the year of our Lord 2020, at 11.33pm and 23 seconds. That was the exact moment I reached the second boss in Lagoon. I hate this game. Except that I don't. Lagoon is the worst so-called role-playing game I have ever beaten, and I've beaten Quest 64. I've beaten Sword of Vermilion twice. It's worse than Hydlide. I've made better games than RPG Maker. Heck, you've made better games than RPG Maker. I still have at least 52 more games to defeat for this series, and I'm preemptively rewarding this one as the worst on the system. And I still don't hate it. Here's the entire inciting action in one screenshot. The water around Lakeland has recently become muddy. It must be a sign of something evil. That's it. That's your entire game. This container of letters that is meant to send you on a grand adventure both writes and caches a check for 42 cents. You know right away that you're not getting much, but the game does at least deliver. An NPC saying, please put these on and be ready to go, is immediately followed by, you get 300 gold. The armor shop has a sword in the building. There's an item in the second town that costs 10,000 gold. The most gold I ever had at one time in the entire game was right before the final boss when I had 7,611. Most of the design is similarly lazy. They copied the YS series menus and ever-present player and enemy meters, but haphazardly attempted to turn it into an action RPG instead of using bumped-based combat. The resulting combat system can only be accurately described as a disaster. Even after, even after beating the game, you never get used to the size of your sword or the particular nature of the enemy hitboxes. That when you're facing north, the sword's hurtbox is offset slightly to the right. When you're in a town, some doors are open, some are closed. You may be expecting to be able to enter the open ones and not the closed ones, which would make sense. Apparently Kenko didn't want their game to make sense, as there are open doors you cannot enter, and closed ones where you can. There's a part where you go through a dungeon and reach a new town, and see this guy. If your reaction isn't to say, NEVER TRUST ANYONE who needs a haircut, then I have failed in educating my audience. You've just entered a new town, and he sends you on a fetch quest to go back through the dungeon you just came from to get an item for him. The game is making you do the same thing you just did two more times for no reason at all. And yet, I still don't hate this game. The boss fights are an exercise in cheesery. None of them feel like legitimate fights, and instead feel like figuring out how to abuse the broken AI. If speedruns of this game didn't exist to show me how to cheat these fights, I never would have been able to beat the game. It feels as if they only tested if it were possible to damage the enemy, and if it were possible to hit them once, it was possible to defeat them. Some go down in seconds, others take 15 minutes to whittle their health bar. There's exactly one in-game cutscene, and its sight is a glory to behold. There's one more taking place outside the game environment that chronicles a strange subplot where a princess gets kidnapped, and it resolved less than an hour later. This game features points of no returns, they're not telegraphed in any way, and there's no real reason that I can discern. The first quest you do involves aiding this comically slow child safe passage back to town. And at this point, any expectation of this game having any kind of value is buried alive. Yet, I do not hate this video game. The small flourishes you would expect to see in a game like this are all, without exception, missing entirely. When you level up, 
There's no message. No jingle plays. It just happens in the background. If you never open your menu, you would never even know. The areas don't naturally transition to one another. There are multiple instances where you'll step on a tile and, without so much as a small animation, you'll be teleported to somewhere new. When you give the item back to the man who you should never trust, he vanishes from the screen as if he were never there at all, as if he was a figment of the game's imagination. The game never tells you how rings work. It took me almost half the playtime to realize that they constantly deplete your magic points and they automatically unequip when you run out. When you first obtain magic, your initial reaction will be something along the lines of, gee, this will make fighting bosses a heck of a lot easier. Unbeknownst to the potential player, the game disables the use of magic against all boss encounters. And no, Lagoon never explains why. There are two parts where, in order to progress, you need to jump on platforms that are clearly in the background. This game has so many flaws, yet I'll repeat myself again. I do not hate this game. Whenever you play a video game and commit to seeing it through to the end, you learn about it, spend time with it, and enter a sort of relationship with the game. Video games are only as warm and accommodating as the designers allow them to be. And Lagoon is a cold, calculated, artificial intelligence mistress. When you've already decided that you're in it till the end, when a game as broken as this presents itself, you, you weirdly get into it. I was talking about this game in a Discord server that I'm in, and for a few days it oddly became a thing to watch me play through it. If I rated games on a number scale, I would give Lagoon a 1 out of 10. Even still, there's a unique jank that legitimately pulled me in. By any objective measure, this is a terrible video game, and I still enjoyed almost every minute of it. I don't see myself ever playing this game again, but then again, who knows? After all, I've beaten the Sword of Vermilion twice, and the first Breath of Fire six times. There's an alternate reality where, instead of accidentally clicking on Breath of Fire on that hand-me-down e-machine, I clicked on Lagoon and swear off video games altogether. Except for the fact that that probably wouldn't have happened, and the sheer number of positive opinions on the internet about this game shows that if you look hard enough, there is something to love in everything. And I mean everything. Lagoon is the exact reason why I'm doing this series. I've already played through Chrono Trigger. I've played Earthbound. Without this context, without playing games like Lagoon, I can't appreciate the highs if I've never experienced the lows. Forcing yourself to see bad games through to the end is not only hypnotic at times, but it's a necessary evil if you truly want to appreciate the great ones. And I have everyone watching to thank for that. God bless Lagoon, and I'll see you next time.